Let me pass the floor directly now to our next speaker, um, who will give you some more examples concerning risk assessment on of superfoods and food supplements. Uh, Susanne Alban is director of the Pharmaceutical Institute at Kiel University, and she will be joining us online. Are you there? Yes, I'm there. Hello. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. A very warm welcome to the conference. The digital floor is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction and thank you very much for the uh, invitation to contribute to this um, great symposium. After we heard about the pro procedures and the challenges of risk assessment of, su of superfoods and supplements, I will present you um, potential and real risks uh, with these uh, substances. After a short introduction, I will ask the provocant question, does the legislation have an impact on the safety risk of food superfoods? And then I will categorize the risks um, according to the source of the risks and um, finally then come to a conclusion. Due to the growing health concerns among consumers, we have a continuously growing food supplements market with, uh, with, uh, with high uh, annual rates. Besides the classical vitamins and minerals, many other compounds are used, especially botanicals. The botanicals um, have even a larger increase compared to other food supplements. And uh, this may be associate, associated with the demand of clean label and sustainable ingredients and the trust in uh, natural compounds by the consumers. Considering the application fields, there is a wide range up to the application in diabetes and uh, cancer and uh, so in fields where they are not indicated. In parallel, there is an increased consumption of uh, functional and especially superfood. And this is in line with uh, various healthy eating trends and may in principle be not bad. <laughs> Now I will come to the question, legislation and uh, consumer perception. Um, according to the, as we already saw several times, uh, according to the general food law, food shall not be placed on the market if it is unsafe. Accordingly, food under the European law on the market is safe. And as a consequence, usually there is no information about any specific adverse health effects. In contrast, according to the um, um, European Community Code on um, Medicinal Products, each packet leaflet of a medicinal product shall contain full information about any potential risk, especially special warnings and undesirable effects. And this leads to the perception of the consumer that self-selected food, including health products, is safe, whereas medicinal products have adverse health effects. There is another important uh, difference between the two product categories, and already this was um, mentioned yesterday. The uh, law for medicinal products follows the principle of prohibition with permit uh, reservation, whereas FU is under the principle of banning to that of misuse. That means that medicinal products may only be allowed to be marketed after the assessment of um, pharmaceutical quality, efficacy and safety by the regulatory authorities. This is not given in the case of food supplements and food. And also after the marketing authorization, there is an um, there is this pharmacovigilance, a tight system of ongoing 
permanent uh, surveillance. In case of food, the a food business operator is fully responsible for his product. There are official controls, of course, but they are, have to be performed randomly. And given the fluid of products, this is um, in, indeed unmanageable. Consequently, we have a relatively good knowledge of risks of, food, of medicinal products, whereas it is relatively poor in case of food and food supplements. When we compare the risk of food supplements and supplements, there is a critical difference between these two, two categories. Foodstuffs for normal consumption, um, superfoods are foodstuff for normal consumption and even partly traditionally used in Western diet. Whereas Food supplements are concentrated sources of nutrients and other substances without any natural matrix. And therefore, I would suggest that the risk potential of superfood can be supposed to be lower than that of supplements. However, it's clear that improper consumption of superfood can lead to health risks. For example, the consumption of unusual high amounts special combinations, the intake by special populations, and of course, non-approved novel foods. Now we come to the various categories of risks by supplements and superfoods. Namely, risks due to specific ingredients, contaminants, geographic origin and legislation, and the consumer. Concerning specific ingredients, there are well-known risks associated with the consumption of very high doses of vitamins and or minerals. This I will not focus on in the, in, in the following, but rather concentrate on substances in complex compost botanicals causing either adverse effects or drug interactions. The Stofflisten des Bundes and, und der Bundesländer List in the category um, A, numerous plants with known harmful effects on health and therefore not recommended for use as food. And here you see some well-known examples, including the most toxic European plant, Aconitum napellus, but even that plant is only not recommended. It's not forbidden for use. And here, already in these examples, you see several plants used in traditional Chinese medicine. For example, Aconitum napellus, after special processing. And Aristolochia, of course, and for example, Ephetra, Rawolfia, and so on. Many of the plants used in traditional Chinese medicines are associated with nephrotoxicity. The negatively most famous example are Aristolochia species and other genera containing Aristolochic acids, which are nephrotoxic and also cancerogenic. In the late nine, in the 90s, there were more than 100 cases of um, severe um, nephrotoxicity, including cases of death in Belgium, due to the, um, due to the uh, uh, unintended exchange of Stefania Tetrantra by Aristolochia Frankschi in weight loss, um, su uh, weight loss supplements. And um, by the way, this was one of the trigger to establish um, uh, monographs in the European Pharmacopoeia on herbal drugs used in traditional Chinese medicine. One example of the uh, list I showed you is Kava Kava. And this is a quite strange example because uh, after a long process, uh, the bee farm announced as a small Christmas parcel in tw uh, uh, 2019 
the revocation of all marketing authorizations for medicinal products containing kava, kava due to liver toxicity. Kava, um, kava, kava products were well-established products used for many decades to treat anxiety. But independent on that decision, you can, there is a huge uh, offer of healthy products for careless intake um, containing kava extracts. Another example for borderline extracts is ginkgo biloba. The refined and quantified ginkgo dry extract according to the specifications uh, of Pharmacopoeia Europea is used in medicinal products for cognitive impairment, including uh, Alzheimer's disease and treatment um, of other forms of dementia. According to the Pharmacopoeia, um, there is a limitation of the content of uh, ginkolic acids to less, uh, at most, uh, 5 ppm. In contrast to the extract, the Commission E already many years ago are independent on this fact. There is a wide offer of ginkgo cheese used as food and other products ranging from candies over yogurts and up to other ginkgo extracts. However, in May, the Oberlandesgericht Frankfurt judged that other extract preparations are not negotiable because they are neither uh, food uh, nor um, uh, food nor um, medicinal products. We will see what are the consequences. A young but um, already a small joint are macroalgae used as sources of nat naturally iodine and generally as healthy food. However, the iodine contents of macroalgae covers a wide range as shown by these uh, examples of green algae, red and brown algae. And uh, this is not only dependent on the species, but also on the um, time and location of harvest and many other conditions, including processing. And also the individual bioavailability, bioavailability uh, of this iodine uh, range between 2 and 70 percent. Nevertheless, already a low amount of 200 milligrams of laminaria digitata exceeds the upper, uh, the tolerable, uh, tolerable upper intake level. And so it's not astonishing that human studies showed that combo ingestion, ingestion is associate, as associated with suppression of thyroid function. The last example for risk due to ingredients of superfood and to supplements is red yeast rice products. Rice fermented with red yeast, Monascus purpureus, contains 0.3 up to 4.0 milligram per gram monacoline. And this is a wide range and it, it's not standardized. But monacoline car is lovastatin. And lovastatin was the first approved statin. And if um, this uh, monacoline uh, has a daily dose of at least 10 milligram, the health claim uh, contributes to the maintenance of blood, blood, uh, normal blood cholesterol concentrations is allowed. However, if monacoline is in fact lovastatin, we have the same adverse effects. And this is a huge list ranging from common uh, side effects, um, you can read it here, up to rare but very severe ones, including myopathy, rhabdomyolysis, hepatotoxicity, and dermatomyositis. In addition, the red rice offers an additional risk. Um, independent on the drug interactions, I will um, focus in the uh, next uh, slides. 
it may contain side products. And uh, one example is uh, clearly nephrotoxic citronine. And also here we have wide variations of the, of the content of this compound. And due to this uh, clear risk, there is a regulation uh, restricting the maximum uh, levels to uh, uh, 2.0 uh, microgram per uh, gram food supplement. However, the question is whether this is um, implemented. And now I come to the risks due to interactions of superfood and food supplements with drugs. The prime example is grapefruit used not only in form of fruits and juice, but increasingly in form of extract, especially the uh, um, intensely, um, intensively advertised seed extracts. And um, uh, grapefruit contains several compounds, uh, especially the flavonone narigenin, which is responsible for the drug interactions because uh, especially narigenin uh, potently uh, in, uh, irre irreversibly inhibits the cytochrome uh, P450 isoenzyme SYP3A4. And this leads to the increased bioavailability uh, bio bio <laughs> bio, um, and side effects of numerous drugs which are met metabolized by this enzyme. Examples are immunosuppressant statins, uh, PDF5 inhibitors. On the other hand, there are two cases which uh, this interaction results in reduced efficacy. And these are the, cyto, the cancer drugs, cyclophosphamide and isophosphamide. Iphosphamide. Phosphamide. There are a lot of other reported interactions of herbal preparations with prescribed methods. We all know the interaction potential of high dose hypericum preparations. There are also strong indications for uh, ginseng interactions, but there are also many cases where we not have um, really um, clinical evidence, but which is really proven are interactions uh, due to reduced absorption of drug substances by herbal drugs containing swelling polysaccharides, including ispaluga husk um, and also linseed. Let's come to the next point, risk due to contamination and adulterations. And here I would like um, to mention again a strong difference between medicinal products and um, food. According to Pharmacopoeia Europea, the pharmaceutical quality control tests of herbal drugs and herbal preparations includes all these assays. On the other hand, we don't have, have this, um, this, um, this mandatory tests in the range of food. But uh, in the last years, there were according um, uh, regulations and at least uh, recommend recommendations established, but I don't know what the extent of the implementation in the various um, member states. And um, accordingly, there are real risks coming from contaminations. And this is um, exemplified by the warnings published on Lebensmittelwarnung.de uh, in the uh, period from March to June this year about um, sufficiently suspected health risks by food. And here you see a lot of superfood and um, what's um, increasingly detected are contaminations uh, with ethylene oxide or the degradation product uh, to chloroethanol. This is not the case uh, so far, 
uh, discontamination has not been detected in any medicinal product. But the question uh, remains open. What is a real number of contaminated products on the market and con used by the consumer? Um, a more important or more critical contamination is the fraudulent adulteration of food by APIs, active pharmaceutical ingredients. And here a nice example uh, confiscated by the um, customer um, services. According to a recent assessment of the US FDA's tainted supplement database, there were more than 1,000 uh, identified products adulterated with APIs. The most um, products are used uh, for sexual enhancement, followed uh, by products used for weight loss, muscle building, and other indications. And here you see the table of undeclared APIs found in food supplements. The mo most prominent candidates are listed. I will not go into detail, but it's already well known that, uh, for example, sildenafil and uh, related compounds are many often used, and zibutramine is the most important um, adulteration for weight loss. Uh, although it's forbidden as medicinal products due to severe and uh, fatal side effects. There is another recent publication, a review of 50 studies investigating uh, the presence of undeclared APIs in food supplements commonly used by athletes. And uh, this analysis identified that 28% uh, of the analyzed food supplements these were more than 3,000 contained APIs. And here in this um, special um, um, category of uh, food supplements, most frequently it was zibutamine and anabolic androgenic steroids. What are the problems of undeclared, undeclared APIs? First of all, it is fraud. And second, we have to be aware that each API does have both therapeutic and adverse effects. But in these food supplements, we don't know the dosage and thus the effects of this API. And also the interactions between this API and the other ingredients of the food supplements are unknown. Further, the, the inter um, it's impossible for the consumer to um, consider individual intolerance and drug interactions. And finally, it's challenging in, in case of adverse reactions for the physicians to um, perform a causal treatment. And for athletes, there is a risk of unintentional doping. What does that mean? Risk due to geographic origin and legislation. In the first um, site, risks due to herbal drugs used in traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine. You all know headlines like, like this. And, that. and here we have the full collection of potential risks, ranging from contaminants over fraudulent adulteration and also implementing other quality problems. Um, mostly the real composition of these um, mixers is unknown and there are many, many cases of misidentification, confusion, accidental uh, adulterations. And um, it is indeed the case that there is no knowledge, no well-established published knowledge on the efficacy of uh, safety of these herbal drug mi mixtures. And they are not covered by the EU regulation, but the Asian regulation, and this is this differs in many aspects. I'm wondering why people buy and consume such products. And most of these products are ordered via the internet. And here we can just stay um, just state 
Do you like Russian roulette? Then order on the internet. It should be clear for the consumer reading such data that it's doubtful to order such a product. But it's done. And the warnings, the official warnings, are often completely ignored. And this leads me to the last point, risk due to the consumers. And here um, it's uh, especially concerning the botanicals. There isn't quite uncritical reliance on natural herbal supplements. And another point um, of risk potential is uh, uh, improper overdosage and uh, also the combined intake of several food supplements containing either the same or similarly acting ingredients. And uh, there is a nice recent report covering all these three aspects. And this uh, lady, um, um, which uh, had to went to the emergency ag um, emergency agency, um, took for several months the six-fold uh, dose of an um, product containing CBD and CBG, and uh, additional added uh, for several weeks a dosage of 250 milligram of the alkaloid berberine. And this uh, led to pharmacodynamic and kinetic interactions and finally resulted in significant QTC prolongations and arrhythmias um, with uh, severe consequences. And concerning the combined intake and overdosage, I would like also to mention the risk uh, to overdosage by certain vitamins, minerals, and also green tea extract and algae. Concerning the vitamins and minerals, I would like also to mention the trend, and uh, um, I don't like this trend, <laughs> uh, that um, many producers of botanicals uh, use the trick to add additionally vitamins and minerals in order to utilize the corresponding allowed health claims. Another risk is that the um, consumers are not aware about um, uh, interactions with their prescribed medicinal products. They don't inform and ask the physicians and um, the pharmacists. And this may lead to an increase of MP related side effects or, uh, or the reduction of the efficacy of prescribed medicinal products. The worst case is that the consumer decides, I will stop my um, uh, dangerous um, medicinal product and replace it by a healthy food. And the most well-known example is the use cinnamon for type 2 diabetes treatment in, um, instead of or in addition to anti-glycemic drugs. Let me conclude. Food supplements and superfoods can pose health risks, but compared to medicinal products, the evidence of their frequency and severity is often limited. In such cases of uncertainty, precautionary risk management measures may be considered. A significant part of the health risk by food supplements and superfoods may, in principle, be avoidable. This includes quality-related risks that could be reduced by stricter quality requirements and control systems. Another part of health risk the consumers um, themselves are responsible by consuming inappropriate food supplements and superfoods due to missing knowledge or misleading advertising. This underlines the importance of proper information and education of the public about risks, risk prevention measures, and limited questionable or even absent benefits. Thank you very much for your attention.